Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In the previous video, I talked about the Climate Atlas of Canada. It's a, a new tool which allows people to just, like any person, just to go on and play around with the menus and find out all about the climate changes that are occurring in you know, any particular region that they live in in Canada, whether it be a city or in the far north, uh, rural regions, uh, wherever. So it's a very useful tool. So in this video, I'm going to now talk about the U.S. Uh, climate atlas. Okay, so if you just uh, Google uh, U.S. Climate Atlas. Okay, there's a couple links here. There's the National Centers for Environmental Information Atlas. Um, there's also uh, the, a link from the NOAA um, climate.gov atlas. This is also a NOAA uh, website here. So let's have a look. Um, first of all, um, so this is uh, ncdc.noaa.gov climate atlas. Okay, it's just it's just the it's uh, this link here, the first link I come up with in my search, and it tells you about a little bit of background. And so here's an example of what you can do, for example. You can download uh, the images if you want. Right now we're looking at minimum temperature. We're looking at the climatology. So that's, that's a 30-year average. It's based between 1981 and 2010 climate normals. This is for February, the month of February. Okay, and uh, what we could, you know, we can cycle through the various months and see how the minimum temperatures are changing. Or we can go to the maximum temperature. Okay, the average maximum temperatures um, or we can go to the precipitation you can also pick a year so let's 1895 here so June 9, 1895 the average maximum temperature in degrees fell, uh, deg <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit blah. okay so you can see um, and then you could even cycle through the years and you can see how there's year-to-year -year variation, and then when you come to more recent years, uh, it's much, much hotter. Okay, we also have the data for precipitation. Okay, so this is precipitation in inches in various regions, and you can select through different months, you can select through different years, or you can go and look at the 30-year average, the climatology, so you can figure out you know what's going on in your particular region this site here this link here um, which is the okay so that's climate.gov maps data okay so that's this link here US climate atlas NOAA climate.gov site and what we can do is so it tells you how to, how to use the site and access and so on. But if we just look at data snapshots, then what we're seeing here is the, so this is precipitation. This is the difference from the average monthly precipitation. Okay, so it's percent of average precipitation. In this case, it's for March 2018, and it's just in the US. Um, so what it's showing is, and you can, so this is 2018, um, this is March, and it's compared to the 1981 to 2010 average, the climatology for March. So it's showing, you know, drought regions here, excess, you know, heavier rain than, than normal here. Okay, uh, you know, the, this area here, for example, is between, is, is close to 300, three times um, average amounts of rainfall for this month and you can cycle back here you can just click here you know and look at various years so this is for example 
this is in in 2016 March so we can have you know great drought here we can go back here whoops uh, just click here you can see how you know the drought changes from year to year so this is very good practical information um, easy to find so we have all kinds of different things here we can look at temperatures for example 30 year averages by month maximum temperature average monthly temperatures difference from average monthly temperatures so let's look at difference from average monthly temperatures uh, let's slide this thing over to 2018 um, and we're looking at uh, so this is March February so you can see how cold it was in these regions this is minus 11 Fahrenheit this is plus 11 okay and you can see how uh, no data there Okay, so you can just uh, either slide this along or just click different late, um, regions to cycle through the months and the years. Um, there's also projections here. Okay, projections um, going out. So this is average maximum temperature, um, high emission scenarios, average temperature, uh, Average, let's do average temperature, the high emission scenario. Okay, uh, February. Stabilized emissions, stabilized emissions, average minimum temperatures. Okay, so you can get all these different projections here. Um, this is a drought map, okay, so you can see drought areas, this is extreme drought. Um, we can go back, if we go back, uh, and this is in February, okay, so we can go back and you can see, you know, the drought years when California was an extreme drought and lots of the U.S. Midwest was an extreme drought, for example. Um, there's different outlooks, three month outlooks, monthly precipitation outlook and stuff moving forward. So this is, uh, the temperature outlook, you know, probability of it being warmer than normal, cooler than normal here. Um, there's a section on severe weather. So you can look at, uh, let's have a look at, uh, different let's drag this along okay let's so across the u.s severe weather so look what happens here this is in may right you can see how the severe weather month and of course we're in, we're talking tornado alley here you know how the um the historical probabilities so this is based on storms from 82, 1982 to 2011, uh, tornado alley storms. Um, you, let's look at ocean. So we've got, uh, so this is global basis. We've got sea surface temperature, sea surface temperature anomaly, um, and ocean heat content, seasonal, annual. There's all kinds of different things. So let's look at the sea surface temperature anomaly globally for the month. So this is where we are right now, March 2018. And, uh, you know, we can see what it was like last month, what it was like the month before, and so on. Okay, so you can just see um, how this is changing, and then changing with year. Okay, so here, if we go back to 2016, 2015, 2016, okay? So here's really warm temperatures here. Of course, this is the uh, strong El Nino year. Um, in the El Nino regions, okay, there's the equator. Um, and this is in the Pacific, and you can see how the water temperature here um, is changing. And you can see how it's changing on a, you know, get snapshots as the so here's, here's the uh, water temperature was hotter going back 
okay, very hot, and so on, okay, and it's got the scale here. Okay, so there's all this information here. There's also uh, a data set gallery here. So if you click on the data set gallery, here's some of the things that you can find. Uh, you can get past weather by zip code, okay, in the US. This is a whole section on the weekly drought maps, the US Drought Monitor. It's a weekly map updated each Thursday, okay, shows regions experiencing abnormal dryness or drought. So you can find out all kinds of information there. Record high and low daily temperatures in the U.S., you know, both in graphs and tables. These are wind roses. You know, wondering which direction the wind was from during your last cold snap, or which summer months usually have a breeze. So these, this is like a compass, and it's showing the, which way the wind is coming from. And it's, there's hourly data sets, so you can go hour to hour and see how the wind has changed in your particular region. This is the ENSO indicators. The NOAA Climate Prediction Center gives you current information on ENSO. Uh, record setting weather, sea level rise, map viewer, global vegetation, U.S. Climate Extremes Index. Um, and this is the website, the U.S. Climate Atlas that we looked at previously. So global vegetation health for example. Okay, um, how to compare various data sets, data access. Okay, so here we can go and it tells you where the, the information is. So it gives you the uh, satellite uh, data. Okay, so there's all of these. So basically, I showed you in the last video the the uh, climate the new climate atlas of Canada menu maps and there's all kinds of things you can click on videos you can go to your cities you can get all kinds of information on hot weather cold weather temperature precipitation growing season okay in this video just by googling US climate atlas uh, you can get uh, a couple really good atlas sites um, where you can look at data on your location and how it's changing over time. And there's a data set gallery where there's all kinds of information here, uh, both globally and for the US. And then data snapshots are these more detailed information of um, you know, of, of how things are changing across the U.S. Now, there's also a Canadian, um, there's also a European version, rather, of all of these data sets. Okay, so, um, so basically, so basically, I, it's, it, there's all kinds of information here. It's easy to find. I'm just pointing you, you know, helping you get started if you want to, you know, with some of these tools. Um, there's different emission scenarios, you know, high carbon, business as usual, near future, um, etc. Okay, there, so there's all kinds of great information on these sites. Now, these rely on computer models. So, so I, I have to caution you that the, the globe, the heat balance on the globe is, is changing. So although these models are good for getting a good overview and idea, uh, I would argue that because we're losing Arctic sea ice very, very rapidly, um, and we, we have tremendous Arctic amplification and the jet streams are changing location, you know, I've done all kinds of videos on this, that these, these models, treat these models as baselines, changes, I would expect, you know, as you know, in climate change, everything happens faster than expected. So, so keep that in mind. These models are good, are good baseline. Thank